day three at TIFF. And this is probably the one I've been looking forward to the most. So many big films screening today. And there were plenty of films actually I couldn't get to that I really wanted to. The weather's been spectacular so far in Toronto. Had to get up early so I could get to screening of an Aussie film, The Hunter, at 8.30am. Needed to sneak it in. I'm hoping to do a Q&A with um, Willem Dafoe and, and director Daniel Netheim when I get back home to Australia. Couldn't believe how quiet the streets were at that hour. I think a few are still in bed after some parties the night before. But as for this film, it's a compelling Australian drama about a guy in remote Tasmania in search of a Tasmanian tiger. There's not a lot of dialogue in places, but the setting is beautiful and the story keeps building towards a, a moving climax. This film, it sucked me in quickly and, and Willem Dafoe is great, as always, in the leading role. So, The Hunter gets an A-. minus. And then it was off to the Elgin Theatre for the Ides of March, directed by George Clooney. The cinema seats 1,500. So let me give you an indication of just how long the lines are for these screenings. You have to get there at least an hour in advance if you want a, a really good seat. Um, the queue stretches around most of the entire block and it's a testament to these volunteers that they keep pulling this off session after session, venue after venue with minimal problems. I mean, look at this queue that uh, I've got here in Fast Forward. I think that just says it all. But this film, The Odds of March, it fits into a genre I adore political dramas. It's about a young go-getter played by Ryan Gosling who is working as a top advisor for George Clooney's character to help him secure the Democratic nomination for president. And what a cast. It's got to be the best at TIFF. And a lot of them were here to promote it. Paul Giamatti as well, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Evan Rachel Wood, Max Minghella, Marissa Tomei. The pieces fit together a little too neatly at times and we were picking a few holes in it uh, afterwards. But... Look, you can't fault the cast, and it held my attention all the way through, and I think it's going to be an eye-opener for those less familiar with the, the dirty nature of politics, and, and maybe it'll, it'll confirm what a lot of people already think about the uh, politics. So I like this film a lot, and it too gets an A-. minus. After a quick lunch, it was the first time I'd been able to eat, it was time for Moneyball. And this film, it proves again the value of Brad Pitt as an actor. He's not just a pretty face, he continues to pick good roles. I think it was Burn After Reading that made me stand up and think he just keeps doing this. And here he plays the GM of a baseball team and tries to turn their fortunes around through unconventional means. It's, it's a little long and a few parts are glossed over in this story but it still left me like so many sporting, sporting movies do with a, a warm fuzzy feeling. So uh, Moneyball gets a B plus. Now it was off to the uh, world, official world premiere of The Descendants. And I really wanted to nab an interview with Alexander Payne. He's one of my favourite directors. He made Election. I think that might be my all-time favourite comedy. And Sideways as well, which is awesome. Um, and not only did I get to ask him a few questions, I was also able to nab Mr. George Clooney himself. The film is a thing of beauty. Alexander Payne again proves his wizardry. I love this guy, he writes his scripts, um, you know, adapting them from novels, and he can mix both comedy and drama amazingly well to, to maximum effect. And this is the touching story of a workaholic father who reconnects with his two daughters after their mother's badly injured in a boating accident. This is the best film I've seen so far at TIFF, and I can see why it's touted as a Best Picture nominee for next year's Oscars. So, The Descendants, great stuff, gets an A. And I have to say this, George Clooney is the best actor working today, and I said that in, in, in a list earlier in the year and on my blog, but you should have seen him on stage during the post-film Q&A. This guy has got so much charm, and I think he could sell me a, sell me a timeshare if he wanted to. He is such an amazing individual. Yes, right here. Uh, you have, you have ladies, what is like to work with George? <laughs> <laughs> <And ladies. laughs> Is it like? Before I took it away. Okay, George was a really phenomenal person to work with. He just had so much to offer and so much to teach me on set because I had never worked on a movie before and it, he truly made the set. <laughs> And final film for the day was Drive up at the Ryerson Theatre and I was keen to see this one because it uh, took the Best Director Prize at Cannes and it's a crazy action thriller and I say that in a good way because it's, it's um, quite unique 
starts out innocuously and then it takes some some unexpected turns and some quite violent. It, it caused uh, um, some interesting reactions at, at the screening. The soundtrack is terrific, one of the year's best. Ryan Gosling, again, it was my second Gosling movie for the day. Perfect in the leading role. The only thing I didn't like, I just wish his relationship with Kerry Mulligan as the romance there. I thought that was a little bit underdone. I wanted to see more there, but Drive, the fifth film I saw today, the fifth good film I saw today, and I gave that an A-. minus. And the film was followed by another humorous Q&A with uh, director Nicholas Wanding Ruffin and a few members from the cast. And I mentioned it in my first video blog, but I wanted to give you an indication of just of just one of the, the silly questions that uh, was posed by an, a member in the audience. My question is, do you see any similarities amongst the films that you've made? And is, is there a message or a theme that, you would, that you're trying to portray in all the characters that Oh, balcony! You overreach, balcony. Well, that's it uh, for another long day at TIFF. It's 2 a.m. And let me uh, finish with this wonderful image that I saw walking home. I had to take a photo. There's plenty of culture here in Toronto, and I guess uh, everyone wants to cash in on the festival. So on that note, I say goodnight from day three at TIFF.